Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bell Raywald, and before we get started with today's Step Up episode, I want to thank our very cool sponsor, Event Espresso. Event Espresso is an event registration and management plugin for WordPress. It will turn your WordPress site into an effective event management tool. So check out Event Espresso at eventespresso.com. Look at the demo, check out the features between the free and premium version, and see which one is right for you. Event Espresso, our wonderful sponsor, thank you so much. And let's get to this episode of Step Up. Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bell Raywell, the host of this episode of Step Up, the video interview program in which I interview business peeps who are moving their companies forward step by step. That means that they have lots of tips and tools to share with us to help us move our companies forward as well. My guest this week, John R. Hopkins, a social media strategist and web designer, graphic designer here in the Salt Lake City area. John also recently started a new company because he wants to be known as the go-to guy for all things mobile here in the Salt Lake City area. So John is going to talk to us today about a subject he has been studying extensively, QR codes and why small businesses or businesses of any size really should be thinking about using QR codes for dialoguing, interacting, attracting customers, clients and prospects. So let's hear what John has to say about QR codes. Welcome to this episode of Step Up. My guest today is John R. Hopkins, a social media strategist, graphic designer, web designer here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And John just told me that he is starting his own company. So John, why don't you tell the viewers about your new company and the projects that you want to work in and how they can come to you for their needs? Sure. Uh, the company is Next140. Uh, web address is next140.com. It's the website's not up yet, but the, uh, well, the landing page is there. Uh, we're going to focus on helping businesses reach customers and prospective customers through mobile devices. We know that the mobile de device market is growing very rapidly. Um, in some countries, it is the de facto way of the method of how people interact with the web. Um, it's a little slower here because of the uh, number of laptops and desktops people have in their homes. Uh, it's a little disproportionate than other countries, but. Um, it's definitely growing fast and it's definitely uh, becoming more, more than just a secondary way of interacting with the web. The reason that we are chatting today was because I noticed on your blog, johnrhopkins.com, I got that right, right? Okay. That's correct, yeah. Um, that you have done quite a number of posts on QR codes. Um, so why don't you tell us what a QR code is, what it can do for small business, and why it's been so popular in Japan, but it's, it's just now catching on here. Um, well, let's start with why it's popular in Japan. Uh, probably the, the sheer fact, and I don't know this for 100%, but it's, was, it originated there. Um, okay. it, they were actually originated by, for another completely different purpose. Um, it's basically, it is a two-dimensional barcode, whereas if you look at a regular barcode on your UPC, on, a, on a, anything you buy has this, um, it's linear, which means it's, it, it just scans across a straight line. That's why they use a laser to scan these things. Okay. Um, but one problem is the reason they were created was they needed something that would scan faster. I'm sure you've gone to the grocery store and swiped the thing across there and it doesn't scan, it doesn't scan, it doesn't scan, you know, it's yeah. driving you crazy. Um, and why that is is because it's linear. And I think, and I, and I could be wrong here, but in the ballpark of like 20 to 23 digits are all a standard barcode can hold. Okay. So Toyota's, um, the, the car manufacturer, their company that makes their parts, Denso Wave, um, needed a way to make a barcode that would scan faster and also hold more information. So they developed the QR code, and it is a two-dimensional barcode, which means it doesn't need, use a laser. It uses a camera to scan it, um, and it scans it left to right, top to bottom. Um, and I'm not sure if that's the correct order, but that's not really important. Right. Um, but it can hold thousands of characters. Instead of just 20 or so digits, it can hold alphanumeric, ASCII, you know, any kind of character, really, uh, even even uh, Japanese characters, obviously, since that's where it originated, um, and the you know this this need has been they filled that need a long time ago, back in '94. So people are starting to figure out now that with smartphones and these cameras that they can use these things for other purposes. Um, so the the code itself can store whatever you want it to store, and it uses a data framework to tell the camera. Um, what that data is. 
So you need an, an app on your phone. There's so many great free ones. You can put a business card into it through two standards. They're, they're me cards and V cards. Um, most people have heard of V cards, but me card is actually probably a little bit a better of a standard. Um, then there is uh, obviously uh, just flat text. You can have it just a sentence you could have encoded into it. Uh, you could have a phone number where it, your smartphone, when you scan it, it'll give you the option to just dial that phone number. You don't have to punch in the numbers or anything. Oh, cool. Web addresses. Um, you can actually have it book nar- bookmark uh, a web address on your phone. Uh, oh, yeah, you can also have it automatically send a text message that's already encoded uh, to another device. So you can, hey, text this number to this number. You've seen these ad campaigns. Well, you can do that with a QR code. Mm-hmm. You don't have to like try to remember the numbers or anything, it just works straight out. Um, calendar events with the uh, VCAL, uh, Google Map locations, geographical locations with GPS, right. okay. um, a uh, YouTube video. So what I, what I think is most exciting about this is basically, you know, you've heard for years since since the web has been out, basically, that print was going to die. Mm. It's never going to die. People use print all the time to communicate, whether it's direct mail or uh, signage, that kind of thing. But now, you can connect those those printed pieces to video, which I think is fantastic. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of using video for promotions uh, because it helps tell the story so much better than just a text message or, or, or you know a tagline or right. a picture. Um, so a great example where I see this used um, quite well now um, is in the uh, movie industry with. Um, uh, movie posters. They put QR codes on movie posters. If you go down to the your local movie theater, you're likely to, depending on the size of the theater, um, you're likely to see one or two right now movie posters that have a QR code in it. They don't tell you what the QR code is, so if you're not familiar with them, you don't know what to do with them. It, it doesn't educate. Um, I think it's a big, a really important thing for anybody using QR codes in the states right now is they need to make sure they educate the potential user as to what this is. Okay. Um, in and this for case, those mo- listening right now who have no idea what you're talking about, it's just a um, a square with a bunch of excellent. Thank it's you. actually the back of my business card. I'm picking these up today. I hope. Um, so this is what it looks like. You've probably seen these things. If you ever buy anything off of eBay online or whatever that's produced in Japan, sometimes it'll actually come to you with a QR code instead of a, a instead of a barcode on it. Hmm. Um, I play Airsoft, and all the products there are made in Taiwan and Japan, and they all have those QR codes for barcodes. And it's just a, the only thing it decodes to is a number. And it's okay. just it's the same thing as, as a barcode, but it scans much easier. Okay. Uh, although most scanning devices in retail in the States won't work because they, they, they use lasers still. Okay. Um, so what I'm hearing you say is that even though QR codes are new, um, businesses need to take the time to start looking at those because it's the future. What are the hurdles to making QR codes um, a mass product here in the U.S.? Um, the user base and knowledge of what they are. I mean, uh, most people, I mean, I'm sure you sit, you, you know, if you go to a restaurant or whatever, you'll see somebody sitting in the corner playing Angry Birds or something. You know, they have the devices. Uh, it's just a matter of becoming familiar with what, with what it is and what it can do and how, to, how it can benefit you. Okay. Uh, yeah, as a customer, and then obviously as the company. Uh, so I just think the more companies that are doing it, uh, that are aware of it, um, it's just gonna it's it's growing exponentially in the states. Actually, the the uh, numbers I just read recently were that um, globally, from 2008 to 2009, the number of scans of QR codes have increased by almost 500 percent. I think 477 percent was the number. And the United States is actually the leading growth market. It's sort of started in Japan and, and moved around the globe, and we're the, the last stop uh, as it comes around. Um, they're still, I mean, it's ubiquitous in Japan, um, in the Middle East, um, in the developed areas of the Middle East, um, India. From there, further west, it, it drops off substantially. Europe is still pretty new you know they're not that far ahead of us in, in regards to that although they have a lot more interesting uses of it I'm seeing that are not necessarily business oriented but are creative I've actually I'm doing the research now for a blog post that covers just about all the QR code apps for the iPhone and really rates each one as far as 
all different kinds of data buckets that they can handle, whether it's browsing to our URL, handling a bookmark, a YouTube video, whatever it is, there's all these different kinds of data buckets. OptiScan is by far the best that I've found so far. Um, and it's very quick as well. Some of them handle everything, but don't do it really quickly. It, it's slow, um, which is a, definitely a, a barrier to entry for users. They want that user experience to be quick and, you know, to use the Apple term, snappy. You know, they want to be, you know, they don't want to wait. You know, every second you make a user wait so is, is another user that walks away. So, um, you yeah, know, that's the same with anything online. Um, so uh, the other end of the spectrum is creating the QR codes. Um, there's a whole bunch of systems out there. Um, if you if you look up online, you know, create QR code, you'll 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 see you'll be inundated. Okay. Uh, the best one of these I've found so far is by a Turkish developer named Kerem Erkem, um, and his website is k e r e m e r k a n dot net. Um, so he's got this great QR code generator. It lets you choose any kind of data bucket you want. You can actually choose how much redundancy you want built into your code. So if something were to you know get torn off your code or something, if it's on a piece of paper, it, it can still potentially scan. You can also put a logo on your QR code. If you have somebody you know knows Photoshop and can can create it that way, um, and the more redundancy, the better that it works that way because you're basically putting your logo over top of part of the code. Uh, as I, I showed you know my, the back of my business card earlier, you see I've got this little graphic right here that actually covers up part of it, mm -hmm. um, and so I, you have to just do it and test it. Oh, okay. Make sure it works. You can try different things, and you can you know zap it right off your computer screen with your phone and make sure it works. All right, so let's actually talk about QR codes that you've noticed. I, I, I noticed on your um, blog site, johnrhopkins.com, that um, <laughs> you got excited because you saw here in Salt Lake City a arts organization was using a QR code. What, what did they do right? What did they do wrong? Um, they did something right by actually trying to do it. Um, <laughs> They, they messed up on just about every front, though. Um, technical errors, technical mistakes. They apparently didn't test it very well. Okay. Uh, one trick to using QR codes, and this is something I haven't mentioned so far, is if you, once again, you can see this QR code here, and it's it's got a lot of what, what I will, well, well, for purposes here, I'll call pixels, right? Um, you can actually make them so that there's very few pixels, which the density of the code is less. It allows you to make it bigger, you can scan it from further away, um, you know, so a smaller code can be scanned uh, on a, in a smaller space if it's like on a business card or something. Um, you really want them to be the least dense you can get them. Uh, and if you're sending somebody to a web address, you've seen some, you know, if you go to like Amazon.com, imagine that web address, how many characters there are in it. Yeah. So basically the more characters there are in what you're encoding, the more dense the code's going to be. So... Um, that said, you can use the easy trick is to use a URL shortener right, okay. uh, to shorten that code. You know, the URL shortener is average about twenty. Um, if you use the HTTP colon slash slash and all that stuff, which you need for QR codes, most of them most of them won't work if you don't include that. They won't know what it is. Um, the URL shorteners will make it less dense, make the code easier to scan. Um, otherwise, it looks like just static. You know, if they get really dense. Okay. The op it was the Utah Opera that did these camp this campaign downtown Salt Lake, um, and so when I the day I tested it, um, the the codes were really dense. They had a long URL that they used that they didn't shorten. Um, by the way, URL shortener to use on QR codes sn dot im. Um, it's also snip URL is another one. This they're all the same one. The great thing about those that one is that you can actually change the URL later. Oh, okay. Whereas that's the only one I know that does that. There's probably others that do it. As I did some research, found that that one worked for me. Um, so if you're doing a big sign somewhere and you want to change, you know, it's a promotion, you want to link it to a different web address, web page on your site, whatever, um, you can go through and do that online. And then when the next user scans that code, it'll route them to the new address. Okay. So really useful. Um, so they, the, the codes they use were very dense. Um, and I got there, and basically the web page said, um, sorry, um, there's nothing to see here right now. <laughs> so 
Uh, I don't remember exactly how they worded it, but but and it may what may have happened is I got to this thing at the tail end of the, of the promotion because I saw like a few days later they had new posters up. So, but that was my experience. The new posters I saw them. I didn't really feel like scanning them because I kind of knew there wasn't really anything. And it and the, and on the other side of it, the mobile the page it took me to was not a mobile page. It was a regular web page. It didn't break on my phone. It still worked, but I had to like you know scan in, look into it, and try to read what it was and. Um, it just wasn't a very good experience overall. Okay. You know, if you can not do the things that they did wrong, you're going to succeed. The only other thing you got to have on the back end is useful content. Okay. Uh, so just give us those four tips of what they should have done right. Code density. Usually, URL shortener to make the code not you know less dense. Okay. The risk there is if the URL shortener goes out of business, they close shop. Well, then your codes are dead. Okay. I haven't seen too many of them falling off the plant, you know, off the face of the web yet, but it could happen. Face of the web. <laughs> it's a risk. It's a risk. Um, so, you know, do some research on who you're using for a URL shortener. Make sure they've, you know, as a business, and this is something as any business, anybody you're using that you're going to rely on, make sure that they that they are a sound financial state. Okay. Um, Bitly? Does Bitly work? For Bitly her? works very well. Okay. Yeah, um, and it actually, you know, just like. The one I mentioned, it actually provides you some analytics, okay. uh, which is very useful. If you don't have analytics on, already on your site, you should you should have that already. But um, so, code density: make sure the code's not very dense, um, if at all possible. Um, examples of like using a business card kind of thing, where you're downloading a V card. Well, that density is what it is. That's all encoded into the code. All the data is in the code. It doesn't have to go talk to a server or anything. So, um, it, that's what it is. Just make sure you're concise with the data you use for those. Um, next thing is uh, make sure that there's valuable content on the back end that actually speaks to what the user is expecting. Um, test it. That's the other another huge thing is make sure you test these. Like I mentioned, I've got a BlackBerry device that I just use just for this purpose to make sure that these things work. Because uh, that's sort of, you know, I've got an, it's like a three-year-old BlackBerry it is the low end of the spectrum as far as what people are going to be using. Uh, so I make sure it works well on those. And, you know, I'll get to the latest iPhone, so make sure it works well on the, on the spectrum there. Um, I haven't forked over the money for a Droid phone, but that's on my list of, of uh, things to do so I can make sure I test on those. Those are the three big ones. Um, what else did they get wrong? They got wrong the uh, – well, if they tested, they would have caught the fact that they'd used two spaces in the thing, so it would have resolved correctly. And then their page wasn't mobile either. Their There's page like, wasn't mobile, yeah. Okay. So make sure it's mobile content, useful content, the code density is good, uh, and uh, and you test it. Okay. Uh, and and did, they, um, did they give you anything for doing that? Like did you get a discounted ticket or? It just basically linked me to the page so that I could find out about dates and stuff. I don't think you should necessarily use these as a way to, to serve a discount. Okay. Uh, I'm not a big believer in discounts. Um, because it just it degrades the value of, of your product. Okay. Uh, not that it's a bad thing to use ever, but um, use that wisely. Um, if it's you know if it's something you know useful for bringing somebody new into the door of a business, that's probably not a bad thing. But um, the problem is then that person, the next time they come back, they've got that point of pain. We're like, well, now it costs me more to use it. Yeah. Um, if that's the only way you can really provide value right then and there, then then have at it. Uh, but yeah, you absolutely have to provide value, provide a reason for people to check it out. Okay. If you look up, uh, just do a Google search, Louis Vuitton um, QR code, you'll find probably the coolest QR code ever made. Hmm. Uh, it was uh, Takashi, I think is the designer's name for it. Um, I'm sure if you look it up, you'll find his name. It's, he's a Japanese guy, uh, designer, and he, he's made this really brilliant looking Definitely for the Japanese market QR code. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. Um, and, and unfortunately, it's a little overdesigned. It doesn't scan well on all, all the scanners I've used. Uh, but you know, there they, you know, in that instance, um, function definitely followed form instead of what typically works is the other way around. But um, and it, it actually just linked to their their Japanese um, market store, their their Japanese Louis Vuitton store. Um, but like I said earlier, the, the the easiest, most effective thing to do is link it to video. Okay. Whether you link it directly to video or you link it to a page that has some other calls to action on it and includes the video, I think 
connecting people to video is just a fantastic way to, to reach out to them and, and engage them. Um, I used to send, um, uh, for a PR firm I worked for, I was in charge of their HTML email campaigns. And anytime I could get the client to do a video, the click throughs on those, on those emails, uh, was three to four times higher. And that's, that's gold right there. You know, so, and, and QR codes are the same thing. If you can link it to video and make it worth sharing, specifically, you know, people will want to talk about it. And, you know, anything online, if you can get people talking about it, you know, word of mouth is a fantastic tool. Okay, so the places to put a QR code? Anywhere that you have a printed message, with few exceptions. I do not recommend putting them on billboards on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. It's not a good idea. Specifically, the municipality should have them taken down if they do that. But there are places that are doing that, you know, that, that uh, um, maybe where they have, you know, uh, you know, a HOV land or something where there's a commuter in the car. Or, <laughs> but not a good idea. You don't want somebody, you know, a car wreck to be associated with your brain. <laughs> uh, but billboards, um, if you're doing direct mail, you should absolutely be using QR codes. Um, you know, as long as you can generate the content that's, that's worth scanning right you know the, the user has to do something extra to interact with it you should make sure that they're getting a benefit from it um imagine um well here's an example i saw um, this is also in london um a company that makes a local company that makes cheese sells they sell it to these uh, grocers um and in the store there next to each cheese is a qr code the user can scan that qr code um some videos were about the people who make the cheese. Some videos were about the cheese um, itself and, you know, maybe what you'd pair it with. Some of it was just text content. But it, they used it in a way to connect the user to that local manufacturer, that local company. Um, and if you can connect, you know, make somebody feel connected to your business, well, they're much more likely to be a, a customer. So uh, they'll reach out and look for that one product. You know, it's like if you go to the bar and they know your name, yeah. Uh, that's the bar you're going to go to next time yeah. because you know that you've got that connection. So, yeah. and were those videos it, yeah. hosted on YouTube or on their YouTube's site? a fantastic tool for many reasons. The SEO in YouTube is far and above a fa just fantastic. Although I prefer Vimeo.com because okay. of its user interface, everything else YouTube wins. There's more users there. Um, now in Google search, when you're searching for content, uh, there, you know, you oftentimes get video results. Um, and if your video is number one on that, then it's automatically on that front page. Um, and it, uh, it automatically by default handles mobile. Whereas Vimeo, you have to be a paid customer for it to okay. be com to mobile devices. Um, I'm disappointed with them for that because I love their, their, their service. It's really good, but uh, YouTube by far is it's free. It works. They have a huge infrastructure. It's reliable. Um, yeah. Okay. So, but, but once again, ideally, you, if you have the time, link to a web page that has a link to that video on it. That way, you can actually add other calls to action on it. You can change that web page, and you have control over it. Exactly. Okay. Great. All right. So we've talked about what a QR code is. We've talked about how businesses can use them. You've given us some examples of creative ways that businesses are using them. Yeah. You've given us some great tips about what not to do, putting too much content, not making sure that your page is not mobile friendly. Um, are there any other tips that you want to share before we wrap up? And by wrap up, I mean you're going to give the viewers their own QR code assignment. Right. So, um, test. Make sure you test what you're doing. Okay. That's with anything, really. Um, obviously, the more technical and the more new the technology is, the more you have to test. Um, you need to know what the variables are. And, you know, like I mentioned, I need to make sure people with BlackBerry devices can use them. So I've got a BlackBerry that I test on. I bought it on uh, Craigslist for 100 bucks. Um, you know, easy, easy. And for, for, you know, the cost of making a mistake is well more than that. So, it's a wise investment, and and if you're in a, in a company, uh, I'm sure you have access, you know, within the, the group. If you've got 40 people in your company, I'm sure you have access to just about every kind of mobile device you can you can imagine. Um, yeah, so just test, 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 and test. 
test it when it's done. Don't just test the QR code, put it out in the print, and then um, and then just assume it works. Test it, you know, like in the case of those Utah, those the the Utah Opera Symphony, um, you know, they they may have tested very well and then not tested when it was done, or not tested with multiple scanners. Each each phone you can have set several different scanners. Test it on the range of scanners you can find. So there's definitely a time investment in testing, but um, it, you got to spend that time doing it. Okay. All right. So give us our assignment, John. And if there's a website or link involved that we need to go to, give us that first. Okay. Um, the web address I was talking about earlier, um, karamurkham.com or .net. Sorry. Okay. Go there. Play around with the QR codes and and uh, how they how you can create them. Um, just make some, you know, make some some what, whatever content you want to drive drive to a video, um, whatever it is you, you might have content for. Um, then, um, you know, an easy thing to do would be to go down to your office supply store, get some Avery labels that you have a, a template for, um, and make some QR codes for your business cards. If the back side's blank, stick them on there. You know they've got stickers that will fit perfectly on the back of a business card. Uh, so you can, you know, if you have a designer in house or whatever, they can, you know, create something interesting, make it look, you know, unique, make it stand out. Then, you know, go for that. Okay. Uh, now the fun thing. Now if you're in a corporate environment, um, uh, and I haven't done this yet, so if one of your listeners does this, they'll beat me to the punch. Um, a fun thing, a way to do to introduce QR codes to your colleagues would be to do a scavenger hunt. Okay. So imagine this. You've got your, your phone, uh, and this is – imagine doing the scavenger hunt. These people have already set this up. You have to go through the building and find these QR codes. And the thing is what you want to do is create a circle uh, so that each QR code links you to the next QR code. And by linking to it, I mean in, in, the, in the mindset of a scavenger hunt, give them some clue as to where the next one is. Okay. So imagine one of the QR codes is somebody's V card that you download, and so now you know. Oh, I got to go to Bill's office. You go to Bill's office, and there's a QR code. You scan that one, and it's it's a video that gives you some clue. Uh, you, all right, so all right, now I need to know. I know it's in the ladies' bathroom. I got to go <laughs> in the ladies' bathroom and scan this other QR code, and and it's a text message. It's it's a it's a, a line of text that says um, go to the topmost point in the building. Or, or just whatever it is that drives you to the next place, and then the person who's you know when they when they scan them all, uh, you know then they win a prize or something or, okay. or uh, you know a big cookie whatever. So um, that's you know that's the fun idea I came up with. So okay. well, have at it, and uh, I'd love to hear how your users uh, uh, make that happen. Thanks so much, John. And if sure. people have questions about QR codes, are they? They want you to just handle their QR codes um, design. So they would go to... You can reach me at john at next40.com. Next140.com, sorry. Okay. Um, you can check out my blog, like you mentioned. It's got some, some good information there. But we'll have some uh, planning to talk specifically about different markets. Uh, probably the first thing we're going to be looking at is real estate. Um, but there's so many different ways to use it. And uh, you know, my goal is to be in the Salt Lake area, the the go-to guy for how to, how to use these things and how people come up with really neat ideas on how to how to use these and other other techniques uh, to reach customers or just achieve whatever goals they might have. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And step up, everyone. You'll see action in your business when you take that first step. And John has given us the first step for QR codes. So thank you so much, John. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Bye.